now we're starting from you have your engine compiled from source how do you add the spout plugin to your C++ project so as you can see here we have our project called my project it's a C++ blank project template uh, and if I hit play it doesn't really do anything but it works so it doesn't crash everything is good everything is Gucci Prada Armani whatever clothing brand you wear it's that so with that done uh, we now have to move over and actually pull down the spout plugin so this is where things get a lot more tricky uh, like run DMC alright so what you want to do is you want to pull up github and when you, you want yeah you want to go to my repo which there's a link in you probably found this video by this link because this video is probably going to be unlisted in any case you're at the github you want to hit download zip or if you're using an actual repo, uh, like source tree or something, you can do that. But as long as you get the files here, what you want to do is you want to open up the your archive or your repo, and go to your engine folder that's inside, and you're just going to copy paste or drag and drop onto your existing engine that you just set up, and that should put all your put all my files into your engine build, and. I want to close Visual Studio because it's important that that's closed before we do the next step. But to verify that it worked, the drag and drop, go to plugin or engine plugins, runtime, and make sure you see a spout plugin folder. Now, because we're doing this live, if there's a chance for it to not work, this is it. So after you're done doing this, run generate project files again. And this should not take too long. And it seems to have worked fine. So from here, uh, what you want to do is, um, what do you want to do? You want to open up your solution folder file again. Now, if you did not put your uh, solution, your project into your same folder as your engine, you want to go to your Visual Studio a little bit different way. And I'll show you that by going to engine binaries win64 uh, ue4error.exe and opening up your project again essentially. Now this is for if you have not put your project in the same folder. If you did, you should be able to open up that SLN file that we did before and it should be just fine. But just in case. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so once you get this open, uh, you want to go to Open Visual Studio. And the reason why you do this through here is that it ensures Visual Studio has the right project files open if, once again, you did not put your project into your the same folder as your engine folder. But if you followed me, you already did that, and you can just open the SLN as you did before. And in your My Project uh, solution folder tree here, expand this to Source, My Project, and open up the build.cs file. And in this file here, you're going to add something called a dependency to the Spout plugin module. And to do that, all you're going to do is where it says public dependency module names, add a comma in here, add quote, add double quotes, and type in spout plugin, and add some other quotes to end that off. Save this, and then build my project. By right-clicking, hitting build, you should still be on development error 164. That doesn't change, but please verify that you're on that. And we'll let this build. All right, so it's parsing headers for things. Now, if we're lucky, you should see text down here at the bottom that says something like something with the spout plugin, some related not to the spout plugin. It might actually fail because I just realized we missed a whole set of steps. Whoops. Well, let's see what happens.
All right. So when you do this, if you do this in these order, is you can think of it as we messed up, or you can think of it as verifying that you installed the GitHub folders right. Hey, 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 hey. All right. So if you did that, you should get an error that says cannot find file spout.h, right, uh, in your output log, which is good. It means that the plugin is trying to compile, but it can't find it because you did not compile the spout SDK. Good news. So what this means is you got to go down. You, yeah, you got to go and grab spout SDK files. So to do that, just Google spout GitHub and find the one that says lead edge spout two this is the one I'm using and it downloads it. And this will download the spout repo. And this should not take very long. It is not that big. I thought it is only 192 megs. So it's kind of big. And ex put this on a folder anywhere. It doesn't actually matter where too much. I want to delete my old folder. Just, oh shit, wrong thing to click. So just put this anywhere. It doesn't matter where. All right. And you probably already have some of this already set up if you're trying to use Spout, but you know. Uh, so go to Spout SDK, go to Source, and open up VS 2010. You should be using 2013, but I mean, technically you can use anything here, but for Unreal, use 2013. For Spout, as long as you're greater than 2010, open up the SLN file. And then it's going to ask, hey, or it's going to say, hey, we're going to upgrade this project. You hit OK, and it's fine. Then choose, change the bug on the top to release, and change Win32 to Win64, and right click Spout SDK and hit build. And this should be really fast. One succeeded. And we'll build Win32 just because, just in case you're using Win32. Okay, so once you build those two, you can go ahead and close this. And in the VS2010 folder, you're going to see two folders. You're going to see Win32, you're going to see Win X64. So open up X64, open up release, and you're going to see a bunch of files in here, but the two that you want are spout.dll and spout.lib. You can hold down Control and click these two files to select them. Hit Copy, and then go to your Engine folder, which is way far back. Um, go to your Engine folder, go to Engine, Go to source, go to third party, go to spout, go to win64, and paste these files in here. All right. And go ahead and grab your win32 files located in the same spot where you compiled spout. So VS2010 win32 release, grab spout.dll and spout.lib, copy these, and put them in your engine source third party spout win32 paste right you put those there and now grab the spout dll that you copied and this is the win32 folder make sure you're, you're win32 or if you're in 64 use 64 uh, but take the same dll and because this is the win32 dll i'm going to go to engine binaries win32 and paste that in here then i'm going to go back and i'm going to grab my win64 uh, spout.dll doesn't matter if you use the one from the vs2010 folder or the one that you already copied over they're both they both should be identical and then go to engine binaries win64 and paste that in here so spout.dll is in both those once you've done that right uh, you then need to go to Spout SDK source, and instead of going into the 20 Visual Studio 2010 folder, sort by type and make sure you grab only the header files, the .h files. Copy these, and then navigate in your engine folder to engine source uh, third party Spout include and paste these here right so now your header files are where this file says put spout headers here once you've done that you don't need to recompile the engine or anything 
you should just be I mean you shouldn't have to reload or regenerate project files but you will have to recompile your project so right click my project and hit build and this should compile your project linking it to the spout plugin files now if you've ever done any integrations into any other stuff there's a lot of steps here but if you're familiar with the technical details you'll find that this is actually way easier doing this in Unreal than using any other engine because there's all these weird linker settings you gotta do and whatnot. It's already all handled for you. Once you put those files where you need to put them, everything is good. And when you compile your project, you should see one succeeded. First try, hell yeah, doing it live. Okay, so once you that's set up, open up your spout test or go to your engine and open up your engine binaries. One thing we got to do here is we have to open up the editor in OpenGL mode. So in order to do this, the easiest way to do it is to right click in your engine root folder, your Unreal Engine root folder and go file, right click new text document. And we're going to make a batch file. So to do that, name it something like editor dash OpenGL. And instead of saving it as a .txt file, save it as a .bat file. And it's going to say, whoa, hold on there, buddy. This is unsafe. Hit yes. Now right click this and hit edit. And you get notepad. So in here, you're going to write the path to the engine editor and then add the OpenGL command line, which you can do by doing start engine binaries, Win64, Win32 if you want, uh, ue4editor.exe dash OpenGL. Now, if you're saying right now, couldn't I do that with a shortcut instead of a batch file? Yes, you could, but I prefer batch files. To do it with a shortcut, you can go to in, you can go to your UE4 folder and you can make a shortcut to your desktop or whatever. And in the shortcut, you can right click it, hit properties, and then just type in dash open GL at the end here. Either method works. I much prefer the batch file, but up to you. So once you load this up in OpenGL mode, all right. So I want to open up my project, and hopefully, I've never actually done this before, where I loaded that little launcher window in OpenGL mode, and then opened up a project. But hopefully, we should be still in OpenGL mode. I can tell because we have to compile shaders again, and compiling OpenGL shaders takes a little longer. So before we do anything, I like to make sure our shaders are compiled completely. So in the meantime, while this is happening, I'm going to open up. Um, well, you should have your spout tools already set up and whatnot. And uh, I'm going to load up Resolum or however you say that name. Resolum Arena 4. So I'm running at a 4K display, so it's a little big. So I'm going to scale this down real quick. And we'll leave this open, but we won't do anything with it for now. So when you load up my project, in order to verify that Spout is running after you've compiled it, after you put all those files in the right place, go to Window, Plugins, and you should see Spout on the left. You should see my face and make sure that it's enabled. If it's not enabled, click Enabled and hit Restart Now. This will restart the editor and all your problems will be, good, will be solved. All right, so boom. And now we can go back to uh, editing our stuff. So looks like we did not save our scene capture object. I'm not sure why I didn't save it. I'm pretty sure I did. Scene capture 2D. Let's pop this in here. I want to save this as a different map. I want to save it as spout test. All right. So with spout test here, I'm going to take my scene capture 2D, blueprints, open level. Okay. With this, add event, begin play. Again, for those of you editing this video, you guys can cut to the last time we did this, and this should just work. Uh, so 
We do create a reference to our scene capture 2D. Uh, let's do scene texture. God damn it. Right click, create scene, create texture, create render. Sorry, create render target 2D with one copy. And I want a 1920 by 1080 output. I'm going to drag this node into here. Then I'm going to take the scene capture 2D. I'm going to get the scene component art, or the capture component. Get capture component 2D. Set the texture target on this. Pipe this into here. Then I'm going to right click again and do set spout set spout cinder texture source. I'm gonna pipe that same texture into here. And you don't have to do this, but for some reason sometimes begin play gets called multiple times. I want to call a do once function here, just so I know this only gets called once on play. And that should do it. So by hitting play, you won't see anything happen here. Uh, but if I open up Resolume, Resolume Arena 4, and Okay, so with this, I go to sources, and I have my spout receiver already installed. I'm going to click this, and at first it might flicker like crazy. Uh, but that's just because when the editor is not being ran, it kind of cuts it out. So a few things you can do to fix some of this is uh, you can go to edit project settings, and you can run your project at a fixed time rate. So if you go to general settings, use fixed frame rate. Uh, this might crash when you do it at first, but when you set this on, you're gonna run at a locked 30 frames a second. You can lock it at 60. This is useful if you need your visuals to always be capturing or set at a certain frame rate. And another thing you can do is if you go to editor preferences, you can go to miscellaneous and you can uncheck use less CPU when in background, and you can uncheck monitor editor performance. What this will do is this will make it so that when you alt tab to Resolume, UE4 doesn't scale itself down and make it weaker because usually that what's happening there is if you alt tab, UE4 is like, hey, you're not using me. Let's not use as much power. But in the case of VJing stuff with Resolume, you probably want to always remain at full power so you uncheck those boxes and you don't you you make unreal not cap itself so we hit play and first thing you might notice is a hey, it's a bit darker that's because the alpha channel coming in from unreal is not accurate and not good so let's un just not use our alpha channel here and with that you'll have a capture target that works pretty well um, so we can uh, grab our scene capture 2D. Uh, it's hard to see when you're playing here, but uh, if you hit simulate instead of selected viewport, you can move the camera around without being that player sphere and select your scene capture in the world outliner. And then you can move it and you'll see that your resolute camera moves. Or if you want direct control, you can right click uh, scene capture after in the world outliner and hit pilot and this snaps the viewport to that camera so you can move your viewport around and your resolute camera will move and you'll see that even at 1920 by 1080 it's still pretty smooth so you're done and as you can see it's not exactly stable because when I quit the engine it crashes luckily it only crashes on quit but hey it does work so my name is Michael Eller. I am responsible for this long mess of a live tutorial, and thanks for watching.